Hey guys, what's going on? I am Gdubs, and today we are going to be making a Hexit server. I've been playing a lot of this recently, so I thought I'd show you how to make a server. It's pretty quick, so let's just get right into it. First thing you're going to need is this uh, zip file called Hexit Server and the latest version. For me, it's 1.0.7, which is the latest version. came out just a few days ago, and you can get that from their website. Just click Download, and it's right here. Then you can also get the launcher if you don't have it by clicking this button right here. All right. So once you get this, just place it on your desktop or wherever. Then opening it, open it up using whatever uh, zip unzipping software you want. I'm using WinRAR for these purposes. And then just drag it into any old empty folder. Uh, make sure it's empty. You don't want anything else in there messing with the server setup. And if you don't have like a really nice computer, there is a way to fix this uh, so to prevent lag, which I will show you in just one moment. So we got all these in here. And if you want to prevent lag, just uh, right click the launch.batch file and hit edit and just hit run. And then these two numbers right here, this three and this two, those are the amounts of gigs of RAM that it will use if it's running. Right now, just by default, it's 3 and 2, but if you don't have that much RAM, you can just change, just simply delete it and hit 1, 1 gig of RAM or whatever, hit both of those as 1 or whatever. I have a decent computer, so I'm just going to leave them at 3 and 2, Then, if you did change them, just make sure to file save, and then you can close out of that. I'll save it, I didn't change anything, but it just wants me to save and then hit the launch button right here and run and oops came up on the other monitor there we go and then this will do its thing and uh, it starts up it's gonna take a little bit to start up the first time because as you can see in the background it's making all these files but I will see you when it's all finished alright and it looks like it finished up and you'll know it's finished when it says loading NEI or not enough items. And as you can see right here, it just made all the spawn area. You don't really have to worry about what it says here. So now to safely stop it, just simply type in stop and hit enter. And wait for it to safely shut down. This just ensures that everything will be safely saved and you won't lose any data. If you just like force close it, like just by clicking that, it'll close it somewhat safely anyway but I just like to do it this way. And it says hit any key to continue, so just hit a key and it'll close. So as you can see, it made a few things here. Um, I can show you this one quickly. It's the uh, server properties file right here. Then this is if you want to change actual things about the server, uh, like max players. Max players is the only thing I change. I usually change it to five. I found that helps out with lag somewhat. So I usually don't have many more than like two or three people on, but I just set it at five just in case. And yeah, you can look through here if you want to change any of this stuff. Uh, and then just hit file save once you've finished making all your changes. And then you can close out of that. Then here's your ops. If you want to op anyone, uh, just click this. It'll open up this notepad file. And then my screen name is gdubs, so I would type that in here. And then uh, if I hit file save, now I am an op on this server. Or you can also just type op and then your name in the little uh, black box that was up here before. So that is setting up the server. Now we're going to show you how to port forward. So we'll minimize this for now. Now port forwarding can get kind of tricky uh, depending on what kind of setup you have. Personally, I have CenturyLink or formerly Quest. So I'll show you the setup for that. I also know how to do it for Linksys, which is about the same. So first, what you're going to want to do is go down to your, you can't see it because it's on the other screen over here, but go down to your uh, run or just your Windows search bar and type in CMD, then just hit enter, and then you'll get something like this. And then in here, type IPCONFIG, or IPConfig. And this just tells you the information about the IP address that you're using. So uh, two things we're going to need here are the default gateway and the IPv4 address. All right, 
and uh, write those down or just keep this window up. I'll just move this over here. And then now looking at that default gateway, you're going to go to just on any browser and then type that default gateway into the uh, into URL. I've already done that. And then if a window pops up asking for a password, it's usually admin like 000 1234 or the address or the uh, password for your Wi-Fi. So I get something like this. Uh, try to click on like the advanced tab or I think for Linksys it's gaming and applications tab and then look for something like port forwarding not application forwarding just normal straight port forwarding and then the specific port that Minecraft uses is 25565 and since that's the only one it uses have that as the ending port too 25565 excuse me and then the LAN IP address, that's going to be that IPv4 address that was on the top here. So I would type that in right here. I've already have a port forwarded, so I'm not going to do it. Um, but if you were going to do that, just leave this, leave the protocol as TCP. Or if there's a both option, try to select the both. And then type in your LAN IP address. You can skip all this stuff and then hit apply. And then it is now saved. And then one last thing you're going to need to do is go to a website like ipchicken.com or whatsmyip.com and you're going to want to find your normal IP address. And then once you find that, that's the address that you're going to type into the Minecraft uh, when you're entering in what IP, that's the IP you're going, to act, you're going to put in. The IP that you got from IP Chicken or whatever website that you want to go to. And... If you don't have a static IP, and static means that it's not going anywhere, it's going to stay where it is. If you don't have a static IP, then you might want to invest in getting one. For some people it's free, I, I know some companies charge, uh, you might already have one. But it is very difficult to set up a server if you don't have a static IP. There is um, like uh, dynamic routing or DNS. Uh, hosting which gets very complicated I do not know how to do that unfortunately otherwise I'd show you but yeah getting the IP address uh, to be static is very crucial otherwise this whole thing won't work so uh, that is just about it from uh, making from downloading it to making the server to port forwarding it's just as easy as that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to voice your opinion in the comment section. I love to hear feedback, positive or negative. So hit the like button, and I will see you next time, guys. See ya.